Welcome back. This is World Inside with me, Tian Wei. Uncertainty grips industry, no thanks to the coronavirus pandemic. As one of the most affected, the fashion world is prepping for a reboot. Fashion weeks and various events have been canceled or postponed. People's demand and choice are gradually evolving as a result of the lifestyle change amid the pandemic. So how can the fashion industry survive the pandemic? Earlier, I had the chance to talk to Philip Lim, co-founder of the famous fashion label 3.1 Philip Lim. He recently won an honorable award in China Fashion Gala for his contribution of cross-cultural understanding to the fashion world. From a small brand to a fashion icon, Lim is pushing for a concept of sustainability. But during the pandemic, how can he hold on to his concept and still connect his design with people's demand right now? And as an Asian American designer, how has he been in bringing together the best of both worlds, the East and West, to his work and to his life. Let's find out. Tell me about how do you see the changes of the fashion industry as a result of the pandemic and its impact on various factors of our lives? I feel really terrible uh, that it, it, people's lives have been disrupted, but I also try to look at the good parts. The good part is we get an opportunity to reboot mm. because the way we've been um, um, going at fashion, the way we've been consuming fashion at the pace is truly not sustainable. And looking at the big picture, um, I tried to think about maybe this is happening for us, a chance to reboot and rethink about our values and how we apply that in the fashion industry. Sustainability was really the thing that you are embracing even before the pandemic. Uh, Philip, uh, particularly with the recent the Seasons collection, you try to bring materials that are representing sustainability. You try to make sure clothes are exactly what they should be like, uh, rather than just accessories or drama. Tell me, how do you think about all these concepts? Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you for bringing it up. Um, I, we call it three one sustainable balance. And, you know, for me, sustainability is a balancing act because mm -hmm. to, to be truly sustainable, if once we exist and once we make, create, it's not sustainable anymore. So it's about um, small steps that add to a bigger, grander gesture. Mm -hmm. And for my company, you know, um, sustainability can be a very, very daunting and um, uh, scary word because. How do you start? Where do you begin? What do you, can you do? Can you live? You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, we have to live our lives, but we can do it in balance. And I always think about, you know, how do you go back to nature? How do you cooperate and collaborate with nature instead of uh, stealing from nature, mm -hmm. instead of just using nature? How do we give back to nature? And for uh, myself and my company, you know, it's about small actions from from when we start the design, we try to use natural materials mm -hmm. that really are a uh, product of nature and with the natural cycle so that it comes from nature and then it will, um, will, it will disappear with nature so we don't have to figure out a way to dispose of it. Uh, your career earlier in the days was about collaboration with uh, artists who emphasize on nature and sustainability, for example, with Maya Lin uh, earlier. and. Uh, also, there's something about Asian culture as well, about harmony with nature. Tell me how uh, you have been coming up with all of this idea as a result of your bringing up, uh, as a result of yeah. your later lives uh, as a designer, as a result of uh, living in a city like New York uh, for years. Uh, how does that make you to be where you are today in terms of sustainability? You, you know, you, you said it, you hit it right on the spot, you know, um, being Chinese and growing up, um, I guess our value system is in harmony with nature, right? We are, we, we're so influenced by the beauty of nature, the seasons. My mom, she, she cooked all our meals growing up. She planted all her vegetables. <laughs> so, you know, growing up, I grew up in the Western world and I try to run away from that, but now I'm here where I am and it's like I can't escape it and actually I want to know more about my roots mm. and I celebrate my roots in my design 
even when you mentioned Maya Lin too, that was our, for our 10th anniversary show. Mm -hmm. And the concept was um, stop and smell the flowers. Yeah. Because, you know, our life our, is so multifaceted and the pace is so insane that I wanted, when my team asked me, what do you want to do for your 10th anniversary? I was like, I just want to stop and be present and smell the flowers, all the flowers that we've been planting. So when we work with Maya Lin, who's a huge environmentalist by, by uh, naturally, it was incredible because the the set that we built, we we took uh, over six months to to uh, collect all uh, contaminated soil and dirt from construction uh, sites all over New York City, and we um, we had uh, a bulldozer turn six months of topsoil into uh, of contaminated soil into topsoil, and wow. we used that as a stage for the show. Wow. And after the show, what was amazing is we would donate it to other parks and rec uh, and playgrounds for them to plant the new season. You know, that's truly a circular moment. And we were doing this way back when, and I can't explain why I wanted to do that, but I think it goes back to what you said. Growing up being Chinese, our culture is to be in harmony with nature. And this is where I want to be now in my life. And this is how I want to proceed going forward in collaboration and harmony with nature. As we grow, we becoming more and more realized about what is really most important about us, I guess, uh, also about us that we do not know earlier. Uh, I guess that's also for a fashion designer like you, who is a huge name on the international stage, but at the same time, a huge inner trip into who you are. Yeah. Um I think you know when I was when our when we first started this conversation um, and we spoke about uh, COVID nineteen, yes. you know, and what that has done. You know, I I look at it as a big, terrible but grateful lesson for all of us. You know, it's a time to self reflect, a time to um, celebrate uh, the uh, beauty, but in value. You mm -hmm. know, not just superficial beauty, but how do what kind of uh, where does the beauty lie in the values that we share? You know, it's time to cross collaborate. It's time to uh, uh, globally cross collaborate. It's, you know, I love being on Zoom here using this technology and having an interview with you across the world where it's nighttime here and it's daytime for you. Yes. You know, we're cross collaborating. And I think that more than ever, as consumers, as designers, as makers, as, uh, as, as people that we share this earth with, you know, I, I'm looking at you right now, sitting on a swimming chair in front of uh, <laughs> your interesting library, you know. I was just uh, thinking, as an artist, this kinds of, uh, uh, in a way, isolation, quote unquote, uh, brings a lot out of one person. And for an artist, probably even more. I'm just really curious. Um, how you been trying to survive and thrive over the past, you know, five months or so? And what have you yeah. learned about yourself and many of the idea, sustainable, beauty, mm. and inner peace mm. that you have been talking about earlier? How does that come into being with the past five months? Sorry for my long question, yeah. but I'm really curious. No, to no. Know. It's, it's great. It's a great question and it's connected. Um, and you know, um, I've been designing for about 25 years now. And with the change in the industry and the pace in the industry, you know, as a creative, because you're always outputting, you get burnt out, yes. you know? And I think that you get to a point where you're just putting out, putting out, but you're never receiving anything for yourself and you're not, never replenishing your soul, your yeah. creative soul. And this happened. And so I was stuck at home, I was quarantined. and it got me to really just be by myself. It got me, uh, it gave me an excuse to stop designing, but that doesn't mean stop being creative. Mm -hmm. I apply creativity in other things like cooking, you know, cooking every single day and sharing it on, Insta uh, on Instagram and social media. I, I started to just like create an indoor garden mm -hmm. uh, to, to something about when life is being taken away from us and being threatened how to nurture and grow life was something so profound and how we use creativity to design life again. Um, what you see when you say I'm on a swing and the books behind me, <laughs> it's true. I'm on a swing in my home and I keep 
and you know people are always ask me this but i always use this mo this space to do interviews because it allows me to remember to connect to being uh, joyful and youthful yeah. you know i think that um now more than ever we're dealing with a serious moment in time but we also should remember to like let it go not take everything too seriously and still have uh fun and connect to moments of joy and you know um even behind me too all the books you know i just went back in and just started to research all the books again connect myself with all like my favorite photographers artists literature furniture makers you know right now i feel like i'm in a moment where i'm growing feeding my soul again right creatively yeah, yeah. exactly so that so i'm i'm getting ready for this reboot about things that are nouns, you know, the thing that we describe, use them as a word, mm -hmm. but do not necessarily mm -hmm. really know what they meant. For example, about clothes, here's what you said. I, I, I quote that from an earlier report you had. You said last year that I love the idea of going back to the place where clothes are more important, uh, you said. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been yeah. about clothes for a while in fashion. Yeah. It's been about everything else and the circus of it all. I know we are not in the circus business. I love that. I don't know why. I'm not a designer. I'm not someone like a big name like you, but I love that. Exactly what it means that we talk about every day. You know, um, I started this business because I was watching my mother so close. I was watching my mother as a new immigrant to the, uh, to the country. Um, buying scraps and collecting scraps of fabric to, to hand sew pillows, to hand sew mm. our clothes, to fix our clothes. So that was my first, first memory and um, experience with clothes. It was real. It had a purpose. It was so made from love. And in this industry now, I've been doing it for 25 plus years now, mm. and I've seen how marketing has taken over what clothes is. You know, and right now, it's all, everything becomes an equation. Yeah. Everyone uses the same formula, and it doesn't really matter what the product is anymore. It's mm. really about the influencing, the the marketing, how much advertising you can spend. But when you re, when to convince the consumer that you should buy it, but when the consumer gets it, are they really satisfied with it? Do they know what they have? Do they cherish it? Is there a connection to it? I don't think so. I think that they were caught you know they caught the bait mm -hmm. so for me i want to get back to the place where i want the, the consumer the customer to know how this was made you know we talk about china a little bit in your upbringing but china mm -hmm. has become such a symbol in a way but now mm -hmm. with a lot of things going on geopolitics uh, pandemics and the suspicions and stuff like that china has become something uh, not necessarily as it used to be. So, I mean the word China, of course. So, Philippe, uh, you, your relation with China is cannot be cut off because you are part of the upbringing. Uh, but on the mm. other hand, you are an American designer. Uh, you are a mm. world designer. So, tell me about your eyes, China. What is it? You know, China is in my heart. It's not in my eyes, it's in my heart, it's in my soul. You know, people always ask me, you know, um, when I first started uh, this business, 3-1 Philip Lim, like 16 years ago, mm -hmm. I always had the interviews, you know, uh, does, uh, does being Chinese affect your design? Are you influenced by the stereotypical <laughs> tropes of like satin and dragons and, and <laughs> phoenix and The so-called like the Chinese and it, yeah. Yeah, and it, and it honestly, it's so um, disturbing to be so ignorant this way. Yeah, you know what superficial. I mean? And also. I always superficial and so stereotypical. Yeah. And for me, you know, uh, my business partner is Chinese too, and we're both um, uh, products of immigrants. You know, um, coming immigrating uh, to this to the states. And I always say to people, the Chinese in my designs is not never what you will see, but what you will feel. You will feel respect you will feel dignified, you will feel integrity, because mm. that's the value of China for me. You know, mm. this is how I was raised by my Chinese parents. And this is what we're we taught. We taught respect, we taught hard work, but we're also taught that 
you know, we deserve a space in this world, yeah. you know, not just behind the scenes, but in front of the camera. And I, I really, really um, am so grateful for you offering me space because people like you and I, you know, we're here now. So we have to also now bring, um, reach out and bring together and uplift other um, uh, Asian, Asian American uh, 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 personalities and, and talent and whatnot. So it goes back to right now, especially with the pandemic too, and you know, the, the, the force um, racist and xenophobic, if I can be very honest, uh, yes. narrative of uh, the China virus, which is absolutely, absolutely insane. You know, it's, mm. it's so not correct. And we know that this is a health and human virus. So we have to stand up and keep speaking about that and not let them change the narrative, you know? Love it. I love what you yeah. just said, Philip. We yeah. have to have guts, but at the same time, have civilized to have, to have a real discussion. Tell people what it yeah. is all about. Yeah, and you know, um, knowledge and facts, right? Mm. This is a health and human virus, and this virus does not discriminate. It doesn't matter where you come from. It does not matter where you live. It's about common sense and how we take care of each other and I'm going back to how we collaborate with nature, isn't it? You know, yes. and I think that um, I refuse um, to let that narrative change. You know, and being um, here, living here, I see communities here in Chinatown, communities and stuff like that, and even like elders and um, and uh, young um, Asian being bullied and attacked. But you know, for me, it's really that's unacceptable, and mm -hmm. I use every every opportunity I can to speak up and speak out against it, it's my civic duty. Thank you so much. I learned so much talking to you, Philip. Uh, Thank I think you. Um, we are with you, as you just said, an improved version of ourselves. Yeah. Philip Lin, a world of fashion icon, an Asian American designer trying to bring the best of the East and West together every day. And that's all we have for today. If you'd like to see more, try to find us World Inside or check out our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Ken Wei. On behalf of the team, thanks for watching. Bye for now.